Hey guys, CJ here at Top Tech Cards and Games, and today I'm going to talk about a Shadal Necroz hybrid deck. Uh, the idea was kicked around a bit last format, uh, where it ultimately was found to be a bit too inconsistent and weak to a lot of cards that were already being played in the meta. Uh, the main reason to play it in the mirror match is access to the Water Shadal Fusion, Annoy Tillis, or whatever in the world its name is. Uh, but last format, it was pretty weak to all the gen outs that people were playing. You know, the Book of Eclipses, Regeki's, Book of Moons, Bullblader uh, type cards. And this format, the Necros decks are playing a lot less of those. Um, it's something that the format will probably adapt to include in the main more so, if Shadals become big or decks like this become big. Uh, so I don't think in the long run this is a great choice for the Necros Mirror, but where this deck does excel, and I'll show you why in the list, is against Burning Abyss. So if you're in a very Burning Abyss heavy meta, I think this is one of the better versions of Necros to play. Uh, let's start getting into it. Let's go through our different engines and stuff. Let's look at the Necros monsters first. We have three Valk and three Unicor. Valk and Unicor are pretty necessary cards at three right now in Necros. Uh, Valk facilitates keeping your board clear in Necros mirrors if you don't have a way to lock and keeps your opponent from dealing 8,000 with their incredibly aggressive deck. Uh, Unicor is important to make rank fours and to recycle our engine, so those guys didn't seem too cuttable right now. Uh, I can make an argument for two Valks, depending on how streamlined you can make the deck, how often you can open an Annoy Tellus and potentially protect it, but uh, in this list, I could not justify cutting a Valk. Then we have our Tutor Engine, two Bryonex, and two copies of Clausulus. Uh, these guys, not much to say about them, they just help search your engine and get the deck going. And then one copy of Trishula. Trish is too good not to play. Um, it's obviously the card that makes people play very differently against Necros, forcing them to either keep no hand or no no field for the entire game. Uh, it's effect is just too strong to pass up on. It's a game-breaking card. Uh, I chose not to play Gunner or Decisive Armor on this list because both Necros and Shadals have plenty of bricky hands and those cards only increase the problems. And using the Shadal engine, you don't have as many issues with Floodgates as you do in a standard Necros deck. So I was able to clear out space for those cards or from those cards. Uh, and just like in standard Necros, we have our three Manjus to help set up our deck. They find every card we could possibly need to play. Uh, then we have two copies of Mathematician. It works very well with the Necro or with the Shadal engine and dumping Glow Bob and making Herald is pretty strong. Turn one in Necros, uh, as well as some other slight uses like dumping Shirt, which really won't come up very often since we only have one, but in a pinch it can do so. Then we have one copy of Senju. Uh, just having all the clunky normal summons with these cards and the Shadal monsters, there's just not space for a full set of Senjus. Then we have one copy of Armageddon Knight to go with reinforcement of the army. Uh, Armageddon Knight has a lot more utility than, say, like an Exod Force or something in this deck, uh, since you can dump all of your different Shadal cards, and as far as having a Rota out to something like your opponent's Annoy Tellus, uh, it just seemed better to me to have Armageddon Knight that can search up, you know, your other Shadal monsters by dumping a Hedgehog, or just get all that utility. It just seemed like it brought more to the table to me. So, there's our normal summons that help get our engine going. Then, to go with the Mathematician, like I said, we have Glow Up Bulb. Gives us access to some of our extra deck, or some extra deck cards, rather, that we wouldn't normally have. Uh, it's an Earth, though that's not relevant because I'm not playing any Shacks. And it's just a really cool card. Uh, one sure it. I would obviously play more if I could, but he's limited to one. Uh, one of the big issues with the Shadal version is that there's not really space to play cards to recur sure it. So we kind of have one sure it. We're just going to work with that and see where it gets us. Um, this list is probably a little too unrefined at this point, and I think that it would take a lot more work to really squeeze out the most of it, which I'm kind of working on, but I think this is a pretty good list to start with for now. Uh, but not having a Dance Prince or something either means that you're going to have to try to play the game without shirt, you're just going to have to play really tight and make sure you can recycle your shirts, or maybe it just means that you're going to have to, you know, not... Uh, play this exact list and fit a Dance Princess in. I don't know. But so far it's been okay. I've been able to recycle the Shirt as much as possible. Um, and I haven't really lost anything to not having Shirt. But let's get into the Shadal engine. We have two copies of Beast. Two copies of Dragon. Uh, one copy of Hedgehog. One copy of Falco. And one copy of Squamata. Uh, these numbers were chosen because, like I said, this is a Shadal or a Necros variant that I want to play in a Burning Abyss heavy meta. Uh, so I'm playing multiple dragons instead of like more squamatas or falcos. Like I would play, and if I was playing for the mirror, I would probably change one of these for another squamata just because it's a card with a little more upside a lot of the time. Um, these guys are really your outs to kind of monster floodgates like spell canceller and stuff, either running over them or getting them off the field by setting them. So 
We ask a lot of the Shadal cards. Uh, seven is enough to play three fusions for sure, which is all we're playing. Uh, speaking of the fusions, I'm playing three of regular Shadal fusion as my fusion spells. Like I said, you want to play this deck in a meta of Burning Abyss. Uh, it's fine in a meta like Satellers too if they don't know you're playing the Shadal cards uh, initially so they don't make Diamond, which would normally be a dead card against you. Um, this card lacks in the mirror where El Shadal Fusion would be able to help you push game through Valks, but in the mirror match, I think just being able to summon uh, Anoitelis is probably a little bit better than playing a gimmicky card. Not a gimmicky card, necessarily, but a card that has less utility against other matchups to try to force through game occasionally. I just think that the value this card has against other decks is just high enough to play it over those other cards, or the other fusions. Uh, then we have three reinforcement of the armies. You still need to find your Shurit, finds Colossalis, and finds Armageddon Knight. Uh, ritual spells, two Kaleido, two Mir, two Cycle. And finally, one Preparation of Rights. Prep's too good not to play, obviously. It does everything this deck could possibly ask for. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, moving into the extra deck, this is really tight. Uh, there's a lot of cards that I wish were in here that aren't, but we have, you know, 15 spots to work with. Uh, we use two Construct, one, let's let's try to fill it, figure, yeah, Noitelis is right, not Noitelis, one Noitelis, and one Winda. Uh, this is a bit low when you consider that we have three fusions plus the ability to recur them, uh, but if the game goes long, you can use Emerald to shuffle them back in, or, you know, whatever. And honestly, if your fusions are very dead, very, very late in the game, that's probably okay. The Necro's Engine should be able to get you there. Uh, no shacks because we don't have enough Shadal monsters to can or Shadal cards in general. Just consistently pitch to negate with it. Um, if I expand the Shadal a little more, I won't mind having a second Anoitelis. But this is where the the Shadal part is right now. Then for our Kaleidoscope targets, we have two Herald of the Arclight and an Elemental Hero Divine Neos. Just whatever twelve. I like Dragon Master Knight more, but this is what I have on hand. Uh, then I have Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, in here. Uh, Falco helps make it, and you can make it uh, kind of a cheesy way with Math, Bulb, and summoning a Winda or a Beast. So there's plenty of ways to make it. It's probably not necessary in this extra deck, but uh, I wanted to keep trying it. It's a new toy to play with still, and I haven't run out of uh, patience with it yet. I keep trying to make it and see if it's good. Then we have a lot of generic fours that most decks or most lists play. We have Dweller, Cowboy, Exiton. Emerald, Dire Wolf, Rap City, and then Diamond Crab. Uh, I'm not sure if Diamond Crab or Zubaba General is better. My instincts say, or gut, I guess, says Diamond Crab. Like, I, I've tested with both. Neither one's been clearly better. There's situations where both are good, but I, I just think Diamond Crab's better. It asks much less of you as the tower's out. Uh, so that's where I'm at right now. Uh, but, yeah, that's the list. The, the deck is really bricky and kind of inconsistent compared to a standard Necros deck. Uh, it has all of the tools of Shadal's and all the tools of Necros though, so that's pretty cool. In the mirror it has the bonus of locking you out with Anoitilis, which is great, though. Uh, not an unbreakable lock by any means, but it does get a lot of value and do a lot of work. Uh, the deck really excels against Burning Abyss and stuff, where it can play Shadal Fusion, dump from deck, and really go off. Um, and I think it's really cool. I think all those things are really neat. I think it's got a lot of game, a lot of different advantages from standard Chadals or standard Necros. Uh, it's probably not the best deck in the format by any stretch, but I think that the engine is pretty cool and warrants some testing. Uh, and the list could probably be refined a little more. The big concern to me is that there's no way to recycle sure it, uh, and you can run out of live fusions uh, much earlier than you draw all of your fusions, really. Uh, so that one can be fixed by playing something like a Jar of Avarice, which isn't bad in Necros in general. I've talked about that before. I've played it in Necros. It's, it's a fine card. Uh, and the sure thing can be fixed. Well, it can be helped by Jar of Avarice, but that doesn't help if you're put into a pinch where you have to remove it early. Though that one can be fixed with a copy of Dance Princess. Um, some other things, ways to protect the Anoitelis, like Lances or Scoldings or something. Uh, if you expect a lot of the Mirror, you can tune the Shadal variant to play the Mirror. Though I'm not sure that's any better than just playing a standard Necros list. Uh, plenty of things to try, plenty of ways to adapt this to your meta. But like I said, this one was built assuming you're in a BA heavy meta, and that's really where this specific list excels. Uh, I hope you guys like this video. Uh, it's definitely not the most original concept ever, but I think it is a better, 
better way to take Shadal's or Necros and just jamming the most standard list possible. Uh, I don't think that's really the right choice. You want to try to do something a little bit different with the deck. The, the super generic lists are just going to get... You're going to find people solving ways to play against those decks, so you need to get a little more innovative and tacky then. Just playing the most generic 40 cards ever. Those decks will be very good, you'll beat a lot of rogue decks, but you'll have trouble against higher-end players who know the meta very well. Um, but for a starting point on Necros Shadals, this deck seems really good. Uh, I definitely want to test it some more, see where I can get it. Um, it really depends on your meta, though. I think I'm going to work on making a version to play the Mirror next, kind of focused around Anoitilis locking out with Scoldings and stuff, and see where that gets. Uh, but if you guys have any questions, let me know down below. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content. There's plenty of new format Yu-Gi-Oh! coming uh, soon on the channel. I really like this format right now. I think Jin was the only real problem with last format. Um, obviously, there was some broken stuff, but nothing ruining it. Uh, so, so far, so good. Uh, thanks a ton for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.